This is Group 13, and we are Mumford and Sons forever. Forever! Hello, my name is Junyoung Kim, and I'm covering the comparison between Mumford and Sons and Oasis. They both originally from England, and they typically the one of the popular bands in their society, which we can call Brit pop icons. They're very similar somehow how they begin the band and start to become popular. Mumford and Sons named after the last name of the leader, and Oasis Noel. He was just asked to become a leader because he was more like to make the band oversee all of the band's work. Mumford and Sons uses vocal, guitar, drums, and mavelin, keyboard, accordions, bonzo, string basses. And Oasis uses vocal, and trombone, guitar, lead guitar, drum, percussion, and lead guitar. My name is Gabriella Kelly, and I am discussing the comparison between Beatles and Mumford and Sons. Fans, even though it's already two years into the band's success, fans and critics are already talking about the similarities between both British bands, the Beatles, and Mumford and Sons. Um, a lot of their similarities have affected Mumford and Sons' success so far. For example, their live performances. Both bands, the Beatles and Mumford and Sons, maintain a simple stage presence that just emphasizes their musical talent. All four members are equally represented, and there's no one in the forefront. Everyone has equal opportunity to be seen on stage. Another similarity between both bands are there's four different harmonies. Four harmonies within the band often bring more depth to the musical performance, and they add more variety to their songs. Um, both the Beatles and Mumford and & Sons showcase these harmonies in a lot of their songs, which really give a nice difference between other bands that don't have that. Another similarity is their relatable lyrics. Both bands sing us about topics that reach a wide audience of people and they can relate to very well. Uh, for example, the first uh, Beatles hit in the United States was I Want to Hold Your Hand. Uh, that's, again, just something about a simple love story that everyone can relate to. Mumford & Sons' first hit was Little Lion Man, about overcoming your inner insecurities, which I'm sure everyone can relate to as well. These, as well as other similarities with the Beatles, if they can maintain these similarities and follow the, um, the path of the Beatles, they can be sure to exceed their fame, even though, and exceed the projected fame that's already been ready for Mumford & Sons. Hi, my name is Trevor Johnson, and I'm going to be covering the leadership aspect of the band. In order for a band to be successful today, everyone has to be a team leader. The challenges and opportunities bands face are huge, and everyone has to contribute the best of who they are to address issues that cause people to make good ethical decisions. In Mumford & Sons, each individual member puts in the work day in and day out, and the group splits up for months at a time to gather their thoughts so that their music really reflects the group sound as a whole. Mumford & Sons are also influential and transformational in their work. Each member of the band strives to achieve their personal goals as singer-songwriters to influence those for whom they play. And they build strong relationships with their audience so that they may be inspired to reach their own goals. Through their referent power and expert skills, they are able to draw in diehard fans and easily connect with their wide fan base across countries. Success is through honesty. Their values and ethics reflect integrity and sincerity. They don't want to sell an image. They want to influence people with their music while having fun in the process. When you have such a tight-knit group, such as Mumford and & Sons, and everyone feels empowered and works together as a cohesive whole, possibilities are endless and are open to many rewards such as Most Popular International Artist, Best British Album, and also Border Breaker Awards for International Success. Hi, my name is Julia Knabel and I am responsible for Mumford & Sons Motivation. Motivation can be defined as a complex set of psychological influences and external forces or conditions that cause a person to behave in a certain way. 
In Mumford and Sons, many of their motivations and influences come from different pieces of literature. Their tracks include lines from Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, Macbeth, The Odyssey, and some of Steinbeck's most famous pieces like Mice of Men and East of Eden. Mumford and Sons is also known to have church-like tones in their music. The band's intrinsic motivations are their fans and impacting the music industry, while their extrinsic motivations are money, musical awards, and creating a larger name for themselves in the musical industry. Hello, my name is Nevin Joseph, and I researched how communication is used by Mumford and Sons to achieve, to achieve success. The definition of communication is the act of conveying a message from one person or group to another person or group. Teams, organizations, groups, and even bands need communi communication for ultimate success. The music industry is a collaboration of ideas and different lyrics. Each member of Mumford & Sons adds lyrics and choruses, and then they collaborate everything together to make a song. In an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, uh, the group describes how their collaboration techniques are just a quote, coming together and a sharing of stuff. One strategy that Mumford and Sons use is the idea of the feedback loop. The feedback loop is when everything in the group, everything is talked about within the group. Everyone understands the ideas for songs and lyrics, and no one is left out of the loop. They talk about their problems, whether it's with the ideas for songs or whether it's personal life. And they also talk about everything from ideas to lyrics. Another strategy they use is efficient communication. Efficient communication is when, um, when the group uses the fewest possible resources to get results, such as time and money. In the same interview with Rolling Stones magazine, Mumford, Mumford and Sons described how they met at one of their houses, sat in the living room, and made four songs just in a couple of hours. And that is the ultimate use of efficient communication. Good communication is the ultimate key to success. Mumford & Sons' success can be attributed to their outstanding culture as one of the leading bands to come out of the region-wide scene in Europe known as the Western London folk scene. The band appeals to a broad spectrum of fans and follows by intertwining relatable lyrics with catchy melodies. The band started off playing at smaller venues and became really popular through word of mouth. Even now they play sold-out tours. The band still considers themselves a modest small-town folk band. Their originality is a major factor when thinking about their future success. The members are highly specialized in their instruments, all of them which sing, help write the lyrics and melodies. Their culture is very professional when it comes to songwriting and very relaxed during interviews. On a side note, despite reaching international stardom in 2011, Mumford and Sons remain a humble and personable. Marcus Mumford, in his spare time, runs an online book club through the band's official website. A shining example of why Mumford & Sons is beloved by their fans and will be successful in the long-term future. My name is Joel Karasinski and I'm going to be discussing three business functions that are used in everyday business and the music industry, including a Mumford & Sons group. First one is information te technology. They gather, the first step is gathering the data, which they do through recording studios or any programs that are used on any type of computer. The second one is data storage, where they will store in big servers, databases, or even a normal hard drive on their computer. The third one is disper dispersing the data through CDs they sell, DVDs they sell, the internet radio services like Pandora, or just downloading things from like iTunes and other programs like that. The second function is human resources. Obviously they need a person to hire personnel to take care of their makeup, um, record their music and also other musicians to play instruments that they don't know how to play. They also use human resources to, for, for lessons, for their vocal lessons, training development, really what it is, and also to hire other people to, to use in their business like accountants, which I'm going to talk to, talk to you about next. The next part is the financing and accounting function, which is one of the biggest and most important parts of the music industry, or taking care of the artists. The big one is taxes, these accounts do personally, because all the revenue that they take in is untaxed. So they need somebody specifically to keep track of all this revenue that they're making so they can tax it down the road, because the IRS would have trouble keeping track of it. The second part is the bookkeeping. Like I said, they have to keep track of all the money that comes in because they get 
they, they get four different checks. Mechanical royalties, which is a, per, a certain percentage on each song they sell. Performance royalties, which is the dollar amount they make on anybody using their song, whether it's commercials, TVs, ads, anything. Synchronization royalties, which is whenever, whenever somebody uses their songs in their presentations or different videos that they sync it with. And also special permissions, like um, if they pay to play a certain amount of songs over and over again, rather than pay for each individual song, like Walmart, they pay for um, licensing to play three or four of their songs and play it over and over in their stores. This, the third part of this of financing accounting is compensation. Each quarter, Mumford & Sons gets a check, depending on where they get their money and how much they made in that, in that quarter in which they receive a check and the account obviously has to write down the, uh, the amount they made and record it in their books to keep track for taxes. Hello, my name is John Joyce. Now we're going to look into the sales, marketing, and leadership aspect of Mumford & Sons. The first week of their debut album, Babel, they sold over 600,000 copies. This is number two on Billboard's 200 compared to Lady Gaga's Born This Way. Also, in the same week, they outsold Green Day with their debut album, No Doubt. Green Day is a very popular band, but Mumford & Sons took the next step and outdid them. Next, we're going to look into the marketing. Mumford & Sons has seven core values, but I'm just going to look into two. Mumford & Sons says that they are less of a band and more of a marketing strategy. This means that they surround themselves with other people such as Bob Dylan in the 2011 Grammys. They, number two, delivery is passionate but not too passionate. The fans look at Mumford and say, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. My name is Shantae Jennings and I will be discussing the various strategies that Mumford & Sons utilize. They use a differentiation strategy by making sure that they are perceived by their fans as being unique. Their lyrics are influenced by literary references and biblical references, which many artists don't possess. This sets them apart from their competitors. Mumford & Sons use various instruments that give them an advantage in the music industry. By having different instruments, they can attract target markets with various demographics. Since they have so many target markets, they are competitive in album sales. The hit album, Sigh No More, went four times platinum in the UK, three times platinum in Australia, two times platinum in the US. In addition, their second album, Babel, was the fastest selling album of 2012 in the UK with over 150,000 copies in its first week. And the biggest selling album in 2012 in the US with over 600,000 in its first week. My friend and sons have a Facebook and Twitter which expands their music to their fans. Muffer also runs an online book club on the band's official website in his spare time. Uh, I'm Tom Polzer and I'm covering organization. Organization is defined as a group assemble to perform activities that will allow the entity to accomplish a set of strategic and tactical goals and to realize its mission. Mumford & Sons is first and foremost a flat organization. When each instrument is played together, the entity or band performs music. Each member holds authority in this band. Authority and responsibility usually go together. And finally, this business is seen as a partnership and all four members of this business share equal ownership.